So you stick a new server in, move the customers over, take the old server out. Same thing with the SAN, we brought the second SAN and replicated the data. We moved all the machines over to that new SAN and we're now running live with that new data. Yeah, I think tw nowadays 20 is probably the, the average number. It starts at one. Now, you're probably scratching your head saying, why would you virtualize just and put just one server in a box? You're getting zero consolidation. It's just, you know, what's the point? Well, customers still do that for critical applications to be able to move them around and fly and recover very quickly. On the high side, and this is extreme, uh, for example, if there was just a, a paper done uh, with, for virtual desktops. We're talking about virtual servers today, but you can also virtualize desktops. Um, some of the new Cisco blades out, the, the UCS blades, they just did a study where they were able to put 160 uh, virtual machines on a single blade. It's a computer about that big that fits in a rack. So that was 160 individual XP uh, desktops running. Uh, the average I do see is about 20 today. And it really is, is a factor of Moore's Law. You know, we're the Halo chipsets are the latest Intel chip out. We're up to six cores per, per socket. Uh, Octa-core is right around the corner. Uh, you can do now a half a terabyte of RAM in these, some of these servers. So, you know, the consolidation ratios are shooting up and up. Uh, as the server power does this and the application demand is more of a steady uh, growth. Uh, that brings to mind this word we've all been hearing, green. Uh, if I can consolidate 20 or 100 or 160 servers down to one or two machines, I've got to think that's got uh, some pretty nice green well, and green is more than just, you know, uh, being friendly to the environment, it's also this guy green. So, <laughs> a little bit of everything. Um, but yeah, there's huge, usually when you do a server consolidation project, uh, most of my customers usually see that complete ROI within a year, especially if you're retiring old servers with much fewer newer servers. Uh, but remember, as you're doing your consolidation ratios, especially in a smaller shop, so the the less servers you have, uh, the more this comes into play, and that's this little notion of business impact, right? So if I have 50 servers that I use to run my business, could I run all 50 on one box? I sure, I probably could. Could I run it on two? Absolutely. Do I want to? Well, you know, I can cut a tomato with a chainsaw, but that might not be a good idea. So there's this thing called business impact. If a server goes down and I lose half my environment, albeit temporarily, that still has a pretty big impact. So you have to really weigh out the values of scaling up versus scaling out, and it kind of all depends on your business and the, and the SLAs that you set forth and also the number of servers that you host. And let me just touch on the, the, the green aspect of that. OctaCore, that sounds like the latest superhero, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but uh, again, as a data center provider, um, our biggest thing, our biggest challenge is power. Uh, and, and the reason for that is the cost from utilities uh, to deliver power is increasing. Um, a data center, a typical data center, looks like a small city under one roof from a power standpoint. Um, and power winds up being, other than payroll, our single largest line item expense. So any way for us to save power is a good thing because when you're talking about computers, whether they're in a data center or whether they're sitting under someone's desk, or they're in a closet in your office. Computers do two things. They take electricity.
electricity in and then generate heat. Now, we get to use them in between that to do some computing and some database work and some things that are of value to us, right? But at the end of the day, to Georgia Power, a computer looks like a space heater. Electricity goes in, heat comes out the back side. <coughs> I have to cool that. So not only am I putting power in to power the computer, but I'm also putting power in <coughs> for air conditioning. Now again, depending on your environment, you could be spending dollar per dollar or even more than a dollar for cooling for every dollar that you're consuming in your computer. So um, that's a critical, critical piece. So if I can take 100 servers that might use 100 kW of power and consolidate those down to, say, <coughs> 5, 6 for redundancy and cut my power footprint by 60%. Not only am I saving this kind of green in my power, but I'm also using less power, which reduces carbon footprint and everything else, which in today's world is, is what a lot of people are talking about. So you mentioned money a few times, and I'm, I'm curious about one thing that we haven't talked about yet, licensing. So typically when I've got the, a row of 20 servers, I need to buy a license for the operating system and a license for the application on each one of those 20 servers. Does anything change when I go into a virtual environment? Not a whole lot. Uh, that's still the same. Um, most vendors, Microsoft, you know, all of them, they view a virtual machine the same as a physical server. So you're still going to license the operating system that is on that virtual machine. You're still going to license the application that is on that virtual machine. There are a couple of exceptions when you get into some of the really large versions, if you will, of something like Microsoft's um, server operating system. Uh, if you go up to the data center edition, then you are able to run as many virtual machines off that one license. You basically license that product from Microsoft on a per server basis at that point, per physical server. Uh, so you can run, if you can run 20 or 30 uh, operating systems on one server, then you're just paying Microsoft one license. Now, that's an expensive license that you're going to pay with Microsoft. You're going to pay more than you would your just standalone uh, license, but it's nowhere near 30 times more expensive. I think it's somewhere around the range of three to four times uh, more expensive. So when, there's a certain break-even point of once you're able to consolidate X number of machines per physical host, you actually could be saving, depending on the size of the organization, a fairly substantial amount in licensing from the OS perspective. Applications are the same though. Can I have the profess to be a Microsoft licensing expert because that's a definite full time job and it changes every week? <laughs> no, but uh, there's companies that just do that for a living, right? Uh, but I believe also in the Enterprise Edition, unless they've changed this recently, it's a four to one. So if you buy a copy of Windows 2003 or 2008 Enterprise, that one copy, you assign that to a physical server. And with that one license, you're allowed to run four virtual machines on that box. So the, and the magic number for data center edition, if you look at it, I think it's around eight. If you can do, if you, if you break down the cost of data center edition, if you can do at least eight virtual machines on that box, then, then it, it's a wash and everything past that is great. Just one other point um, that I